Joe, what travels all around the world but stays in one corner? I don't know. A stamp. Hmm. Stamp. You have to expect you to say, I don't know. What is it? <laughs> what is it? That does sound like something I would have heard on like 3 to one Contact <laughs> at the uh, end of an episode. Uh, uh, what is the only thing that works after it's been fired? And don't say Portuguese. <laughs> we don't work. <laughs> what? A rocket. See, fire, fire, a rocket. And this Portuguese. <laughs> Anyways, hey, welcome to Carnival Personnel. This is Jacques. Hey now, Joe here. Uh, it's, it's, hey now is not a word. Go, go ahead, use it in a sentence. <laughs> hey now, that's real funny. <laughs> uh, you know, we sound, we probably sound a lot better than the last podcast that we did, but the quality won't be any better. You certainly sound a lot tanner. Oh, hey. Heard you. <laughs> there you go. Um, yeah, it's been, a, it's been, this is, well, it's technically over a month since, you know, I forget, like, so we left on like a Tuesday, so we recorded, so yeah, it's been close to five weeks. Mm-hmm. It's the longest yeah. I've not seen you since <laughs> I've moved back. <laughs> not that I don't like to see you, it's just that I don't like to hear myself, so if I feel like I'm more depressed than usual, it's because I'm doing another podcast. I sound, I sound quieter, <laughs> I sound lower. So I'm downer. All right, there we go. So, yeah, how, how was your uh, trip? It, w- it was fantastic, Joe. It was absolutely, absolutely fantastic. Uh, and, it w- you know, w- w- we'll talk about it a little bit. It was great how many people I've talked to who th- I did not know. Listen, um, you know, my, my buddy, you know, John in Austin who works at Apple, he's like, yeah, but you know, a couple. He's turned a couple people on there. I'm like, and they haven't fired you. <laughs> but we'll we, we, we babble about that in a minute. But but uh, but I'm glad to be back. Let's get right into it. I finally saw Spider Man: Far From Home. Hey now, and we can talk about it. You see, you know, <laughs> every time you say that, I'm going to think of him getting yelled at. Yeah. Um. But uh, but I loved it. You you, were, you said I remember it was your second favorite Spider Man next to End of the Spider or third? No no no. Uh, Spider Man two. I know it, it's my. Se- I don't know. I, I gotta. I think this is better than Spider Man two. I don't know. I have to. I haven't watched Spider Man two in a while, so I forgot what I said, and I, I was probably lying when I said it. So whatever. Yeah, this is a really good Spider Man movie. It's the best of the new ones. I'll tell you that. Yeah, yeah. I would say so. Mm-hmm. I, I, uh, the first one was good. No, it's um, and again because it's been so long since it's been out, we can talk spoilers. So if you haven't seen it by now, don't listen to the next five. Yeah, minutes. it only came out three weeks ago. So fuck you. Uh, and if you're like you know, usually you know uh, me, sometimes and you wait for things to come on Apple TV or whatever, you know, I, I understand. Uh, I, I I did. I really liked it. I I it was it was tough. Like. You know, uh, they didn't have. They had a couple clips of Tony Stark. You know, Robert Downey Jr. He was all over the movie, um, but no new scenes for it. It was all stock footage and stuff like mm-hmm. that. The blip, the blip. I love how they came up with uh, the the the, uh, the what they called and, and uh, Infinity War when people were gone for five years in Endgame and the clip. That they had from the high school Basketball news broadcast. <laughs> oh, well, they, they, oh, you're talking about like the people that they lost, and then all of a sudden, five years later. But then it's like I like the the they, they have this montage of like, you know, um, they have a Black Widow and Captain America and and Iron Man, and then they have like it, it's all fading and dissolving into each other. And I forget when songs playing in the background. It's like some sad song, and then it cuts to or dissolves into. A, images of candles, but then you can see the watermark of Getty images <laughs> right on the on bottom the, on the, right. Yeah, uh, so good. Um, yeah, that was funny when people came back, and it, it's it's funny how they talked. You know, they touched on that. It's like some people, you know, lost a, a younger brother to the blip, the five year blip, who are now, uh, or they were the younger brother now, or you know, their older brothers now, their younger brother and stuff like that. Yeah, didn't what was the explanation they had to make kids like take high school over again or something? Well, if, if you if you met, like, so I guess it happened in the middle of school year, or after the halfway mark, but they made everybody start the school year over again, yeah. even if they, we already passed midterms, and it's like, <laughs> but it's true. I mean, it was really, you know, interesting uh, how, how they addressed all that in a kind of a real life kind of way. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I love, 
you know, so so if you saw the commercial, um, Peter Parker now basically has control of the Iron Man weaponry, and he controls it through a pair of sunglasses. Yeah, there's a satellite that's in space, the Stark, uh, the Stark satellite, whatever they call it, and um, and it, you know, Tony's Tony's uh. A AI assistant. It was Jarvis who became Vision, and then it became was her name Friday. I forget. I think it was Friday. It was Friday or Saturday uh, with the woman's voice. Oh, oh, but I, yeah, no, I forget what it was called. And this one is Edith. Edith, yeah. Oh, uh, even dead, I'm the hero. <laughs> <laughs> uh, was what Tony? I, I did. We literally left the theater. Went to have dinner, went to have lunch with the family, and then came right over here. So I'm all giddy about it, right? And uh, Samuel L. Jackson has a prominent role in this movie. He really does he? <laughs> no, Samuel L. Jackson does, but does Nick Fury? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right? Ah, you stayed till the end. Oh, did you? yeah? Well, there's, because there's the two credits sequences. Right. They have the post credit sequence, which, by the way, is like one of the biggest holy shits, you know, in I think all of Spider-Man history. Yeah, I don't know if we want to reveal it here. Yeah, we're not going to be that dickish. But um, but at the same time, this past week, um, was um, was San Diego Comic Con, and the Marvel people released their their lineup for Phase Four. A couple big surprises is that there's not a, it's not, a, but it's only a two year window. It's only everything they're going to release on TV and movie. I think the next two years. Yeah, I think through twenty twenty. One or two. And so there's no new Spider-Man, which you know there's going to be. No new Guardians. No new Guardians. But we you know that there's going to be. There's because, going to be a Guardian. Because right. James Gunn has got to work on that fucking Suicide Squad movie. And then, um, and also there was no um, Black Panther solo movie listed. Yeah. Uh, which made a billion dollars. Yeah. Well, you know, these things take time. They do. I get it. I, I But you figure. Four it, years is about, a, a de- is about the spread. Is for, that what it? Okay. Yeah, I would say like four years is about anything more than four years. It's like okay, what the hell? Then you, now you're getting into Incredibles two territory. <laughs> like you know, yes. you're waiting twenty years or, or whatever, Star so. Wars, right? Yeah, even Star Wars are like three years apart. Once once they do the, the yeah, new trilogy, yeah. Right. yeah. Uh, but so, yeah, so what do you think? Saw it, what it. do you think? So speaking of Phase Four, what are you thinking of the Black Widow movie? Finally, it's kind of like what do you think it's going to be like? A, do you, one theory is that it's going to take place during the blip. You know what I mean? Oh, oh interesting. That, okay, right. That five-year window. Yeah, like that could be one, you know, possible scenario. I, I don't see it only because uh, when everybody is checking in, there's not a lot going on. Mm. Like like Avenger-level things that need to be out there and solved, really, um, except for the fact that like, they're still criminals and, like, you know, they're still wanted or – Captain America and and those guys are um, doesn't seem to be a, a whole a lot going on and you know because you know at that one point where you know Steve Rogers is talking to her it's like maybe it's time to move on you know I'm telling everybody else to move on but we're not and the but on the other hand the one person who's out there doing something about crime um uh, uh, uh Hawkeye Clint yeah they're not doing anything about you know what I mean yeah. they're kind of letting him. Uh, be a one man slaughterhouse. Mm-hmm. So, what about uh, Thor: Love and Thunder? Uh, I think it's really, you know, um, I think it's interesting. I think it's really interesting. You know, in the comics, you know, without giving, we could talk about because you've already said it. Yeah. It's like we, we haven't seen it, so it's like. Uh, but Natalie Portman's coming back, and-, and she gets the power of Thor. And in the comics, that's happened before, where you know, uh, like his niece at one point, you know, becomes like Thor and stuff like that. So. Uh, yeah, it's going to be interesting. Uh, what what I'm really interested in is is he go, is he part of the next um, uh, like wave? Uh, no, no, um, Guardians. Oh, right, because he's on the ship as Guardians of the Galaxy. Uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. That that's what I said. <laughs> 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 uh, so that's going to be interesting. Uh, what about the uh, kind of the Captain America movie? What's it? Uh, Falcon? What, what the fuck? Is right, it? right. Uh, that's a TV show. Oh, it's a sh- that's series. Gonna be, that's going to be is a TV that show. Winter Disney Soldier. Plus. Right. A lot of we, Disney Plus on there. Well, the, you know, the thing is, by the time those are released, everything's going to the the individual. Let's talk channels, about that for a minute. Okay. Because that's, that's um, you know, when we were growing up, you and I, um, you know, we had cable television 
and we were pissed. Some of us. Yes, I know. Seriously. <laughs> Rag. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't get cable to 91, so, you know, whatever. But, you know, the, the thing was, oh, I don't want to pay $60 a month for all these channels, like the golf channel that I'm not going to watch. But, you know, I want a la carte. I want to buy the channels that I want to buy. But now we're not, now we're kind of getting that. But it's like, it's a little too much now because we're not paying two bucks per service. We're paying 10 bucks per service. Right. And again, it's just like, you know, at what point are we going to, you know, call, call it quits? You know, Disney Plus, okay, shit, fine. But what's on Disney Plus? The Fox stuff? Um, go, go down the list. I mean, that, that might be the one that's worth Simpsons. it. Simpsons is going to go on. They, but they, the, the Simpsons world is free to people who have FXX. It's a whole fucked up thing, but I don't even know if that's, that might you know, stop. Like they might, the FXX you know, Simpsons world might shift over to Disney+. Plus. It probably will. They also own Star Wars. They own Marvel. They own all the, they own the Disney The vaults. Muppets. The Muppets! So, I mean, it's, it's like I have the DC app. You know, and it's been interesting because they had a full season of Titans, which is coming back. They had a full season of Doom Patrol, which was good. I mean, I liked it. I, I, I it, w- it was good. It was really good. Uh, but they haven't got greenlit for a second season. They canceled Swamp Thing. So it's nice that they have all their movies there. But a lot of them are still on Netflix or, you know, I own a lot on Apple TV or, you know, my Apple. But the a la carte thing, you know. A couple of my music friends are, you know, are like, oh, you have to, you know, you not, you don't subscribe to Apple Music, you don't subscribe to Spotify, oh, Pandora or whatever, yeah. Pandora, and then you know, because we have Siri at the house, and like it plays lots of songs, but sometimes I'll ask it, oh, play this. It's like, oh, do you want to sign up for Amazon Music? And when you go down the list, we have Hulu, we have Amazon Prime, we have Netflix. You know, we're all, plus we have cable. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like all, but you add, oh, yeah, okay, it's, Spotify is only another four or five dollars a month. This, but at the end of the month, you got like 10, 15. You know, the, the DCU app, I bought it for the year, it was like 90 bucks. So it's yeah. like, you get it for the year, it's like, you know, eight dollars a month. But still, like you're saying, yeah, it was, uh, it's outrageous what you pay for cable. Give me the a la carte, but at the end of the day, you end up paying... About as much as you would for a cable. Right. And you still have to buy sort of a cable because they're an internet service provider... Correct. ...that you need for the streaming for these apps. I just learned that, and I think it was revealed at San Diego Comic-Con, that the Orville, the Seth MacFarlane space show, that was on Fox, season three is going to be on Hulu. Is it really? Yeah. So, Which I have Hulu, great. You know, which actually kind of gives me... Act, that's how I caught up with the Orville is watching the old episodes on Hulu. But yeah, it's just like one less thing on television, which is like, it's kind of scary. It's like, okay, you know, is TV now just going to be like reality shows and maybe a few sitcoms? Because I, I mean, you know, we hopefully we don't enter like the dark ages of network television again, where it's all like game shows and reality shows. I mean, not that, obviously I like game shows, well, but there's no like, I don't want all scripted programming to go on to these new streaming platforms. All right. Literally, I remember having this talk with my grandfather in the 80s, and he said, this is what TV is going to end up being. And I remember when I thought, oh, my God, that racist old fuck was right when the NFL network happened, and it was subscription only. And what what's really interesting, and we didn't have this on the rundown, uh, but I'm, I'm glad we're talking about this. What happens the next collective bargaining thing with the NFL that's coming up? Because, you know, things have changed so much where, you know, when they were saying like the last year, it's like, oh, the ratings are down, the ratings are down. Yes, the ratings were down last year versus the year before. But what was it? 19 of the top 20 watch programs were still football games. And but the, the, the why were they down? Because more and more people are watching just the condensed version of the shows, just the, the highlight clips. Um, and, and, and think about it. People get together to watch football. That's one television for ten view ten viewers or whatever. Right. So there's ten there's nine other TVs out there that are not on. But a couple of the games were on like Yahoo. It, I almost said Hulu, but Yahoo mm-hmm. had a couple of the games that played in London this year. They had the exclusive. It, it, I, I want to say they were like NFL games, but it was like Tampa Bay versus like Cincinnati at like six in the morning our time here. But seriously, it's one of those things where you know. How much will these Hulu's and and Yahoo's and Amazon 
play into like the bidding process to get major things like the NFL. Um, you know, I, I know during the women's soccer, you know, uh, World Cup, Hulu was the only U.S. entity that had all games on live in real, you know, in real time and stuff like that. So it is going to be interesting, you know, how things are getting divided up. And isn't NBC also coming out with their own you know, like NBC Universal app or something? The CBS All Access, by the way, speaking of sci-fi stuff, Picard, the new Star Trek series, right. is on CBS All Access, which kind of gives me some reason to get CBS All Access. But yeah, the, uh, the um, way things have been divided up. It is. It's going to get like more expensive, and I mean, I think we've talked about that. Like you were, you know, you you I like it. And I like you love the Gilbert Godfrey podcast, but you liked it enough to sign up for Stitcher. And I remember at one point you're like, it's only like an extra four or five bucks, but it's like, yeah, but I can't spend another. I, it's just in my head, there's only so many hours of the day that would make it worthwhile. And it's the same thing. I'm going to say once out of every four or five times, I'll say to Alexa, it's like. You know, play this song by Iggy Pop and the Stooges. Oh, sign up for Amazon Music. The other 10 songs in a row. So I'm like, well, I can download on YouTube. I can go and get my phone. I can yeah. play it. You know, I have the music in my house. I'm just there in the kitchen. I just, you know, want to hear, want to be your dog right then at that moment. Um, but it is. It's hard to justify. At the same time, the people like Netflix, what's going to be interesting is... NBC pulling Friends off of it, which is the number one. Friends and The Office are the two most watched things in the last few years on Netflix. Now they're pulling them both off. So now Netflix is going more into the made-for-Netflix movies and series with huge stars. Yep, and they're also, uh, you know, lost subscri- – they didn't lose subscribers, but they had like their – they, they they lost like seventeen billion dollars in stock value when they announced that they didn't hit their projection for the last quarter. Uh, they uh, only you know made up of I, I forget what the number was, but they, they they it was still they were still gaining subscribers, but they weren't as much as they had expected and projected. So they that that in and of itself made them lose that much you know revenue or, Which I love or stock like, worth. No, right, right. They don't lose money. They yeah. didn't make as much as people thought, which, you know. Well, the uh, value of the stock went down because of that one little right. blip. And it's funny because, like, when you said, oh, that uh, um, when we're talking about Gunn doing uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, but first he has to do that Suicide Squad movie. And again, the Suicide Squad movie, which was awful and failed. Only making eight hundred and fifty million dollars cost one seventy five to make. <laughs> they hoped it made a billion. Only made eight fifty. What failures! What a horrible movie. Same I, rap with Batman v Superman, but granted, Batman v Superman stunk. It was ice. awesome. One of the greatest I'm movies sorry. ever <laughs> made. <laughs> you know, um, you know, just because it was in a language you didn't understand. Gave Superman four a run for its money. I'll tell you that. I hate you. <laughs> I hate everything about you. And we would have this debate. Have What's the better Superman ever movie? made a Superman four, which they did not? Uh, yeah, I saw like, that photo. Shoot. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I, uh, the, uh, there was a. I think the. What am I trying to say? On Twitter, there's an account that tweets out on this day in history. This certain movie was released and. They had the poster for S- Superman 4, The Quest for Peace, and I texted back to Jacques. I said, you know, some Photoshop job they did here. <laughs> the, um, this is a fan fiction movie right. poster. Like, like uh, a grunking to remember that kind of fan fiction <laughs> stuff. So it's interesting when you talked about Netflix not getting more subscribers. So for the longest time, people were assuming that a bunch of shows like Daredevil – didn't get a third season that Luke Cage didn't get a third season that a bunch of these shows that people really liked didn't get third seasons it's like well Marvel is pulling it into its own umbrella because Marvel's going to launch like a channel with all its movies and all that stuff or maybe Disney is folding it in that could be part of it the other interesting part of it that basically has just come out and I don't know if you say like it's a whistleblower but A Netflix insider, like a former executive, was recently talking. And the reason is you launch a new show. Like I might have subscribed to Netflix uh, just to see Daredevil because I'm a huge Daredevil fan. And those new shows bring new blood in. 
but after two seasons, you you already either signed up because you heard how great it was season one, or Stranger Things. You know that that that's an anomaly because it that's gone to three seasons because it's that it's it's that big. It's a flagship show, right? Uh, but the other shows, if you haven't jumped on by season two, it's not going to pull in any more people. And if you cancel it, well. You've been in the full for two or three years now, and between those two seasons, it's probably part of your – you're watching all these other shows and other movies. You're not going to cancel because they canceled Daredevil. You know what I'm saying? So they know that. They know these new shows will pull some you know, X amount of people in and will have 80 percent, 90 percent of retention, where if we go to a third season – Producers, writers, and the actors tend to get a lot money, more money. Usually, it's a two two year contract that you have with them. If you go to the third season, everybody gets a bump who's associated with the show, especially the uh, showrunner, the showrunner, and also the main people. Like you can't really replace Daredevil going into season three, and if that guy's like wants to hold out, um, so. But but so they've run the numbers. It's like okay, well, sure we could do another season, but why spend, you know. Up to million dollars per episode for another 12, 18 episode run. It's not going to pull any new people. I'm sure a couple people might leave us, but not enough that makes it worth doing a third season. Yeah, so now you're sort of, now that that's come out, you're watching Netflix shows thinking, okay, is this show going to be so good that it's going to get past the two year cycle? Right. But they have, it seems like I'm blanking on it now. Uh, they, because uh, Adam Sandler is like their number one draw. Like, well, he signed a uh, like a six movie deal with them, right? So that was part of a package deal. They're looking at possibly, possibly getting Eddie Murphy to sign. Right, that deal. was the one that I just heard. And it's funny because just out in L.A. a couple of weeks ago, um, do you remember the name of the new Adam Sandler movie on Netflix? Murder mystery. Tons. I mean, I saw more billboards for that than things in the theater right now. And guess what? It, I forgot about it the week after it, it, it came out. Like, and I think Netflix did too because it doesn't it, like the twenty four hour news cycle. Movies and shows are week to fucking week on Netflix. So that then they pop up on the home screen. You know, whatever's hot, whatever special is out that week is going to get pushed. And then if it's a week late, if it's a week stale, you know, those are week old bagels. We're going to toss those into the, you know, the clearance section. And here comes new stuff that's coming well, out this week. And that's how real movies are. I shouldn't even say real movies. That's insulting. But that's how movies are. It's like traditional, yeah, theatrical it, movies. It, you can tell how well a movie is generally going to do the second weekend. And if you lose less than 50 percent, if you have less than 50 percent of a drop off, the movie's probably going to have a great run. You're going to make a lot of money. But it's the second weekend, and it's the same thing. It's like they promote the crap out of it. But I was I was, I was, was surprised how many billboards I saw You know, just driving around. And it, it, the day it came out, I don't know if the day it came out, but the first week it came out, my little guys absolutely love everything Adam Sandler does. Like they, they – uh, and I think it's through – only through Netflix that they had seen – I forget what made for Netflix movie – we watched his family a little while ago because you know how much I liked it. Um, but yeah, anything he does. Was it the Hateful Eight? or No, not the Hateful Eight. That was a, uh, the Ridiculous Six, the Western one? No, no. The he, Do-Over with uh, with uh, David Spade? No, he he was... Um, oh, Sandy Wexler, the agent? Hey, no. See, look at you. Because uh, I, 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 I watched a couple of Adam Sandler movies. He, uh, his father was a, owned a hotel that ended up selling out to a big hotel guy. Hotel and, Transylvania? And, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> swear to God, if I have the energy, I come punch. Uh, and either way, but you know, they really liked it. They they liked it. They loved this murder mystery and stuff like that. I mean, I watched the first like, 10, 15 minutes. With, couldn't get past the mustache. Oh god! Just couldn't get past Adam Sandler and the and the porn rocking the porn stash. He's porn home guy mustache thing. But yeah, um, but that yeah. I mean, but to kind of cap on that, like shows like One Day at a Time, which were like these kind of niche, not niche shows, but they were like, okay, this is a real gamble, kind of because it's a reboot of a '70s show, but it's also like a non-white cast. But it had Norman Lear, like Norman Lear, the powerhouse guy from the 70s. And that went two seasons and got canceled, but then got picked up by another streaming service that, like, I think Amazon picked it up or something like that. But again, like, even Norman Lear isn't immune from the two-year curse. Right. So, you know, 
I don't know. Uh, I see your Golden Girl shirt across from me. You and like that? I love it. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm wondering. wondering well, go ahead. No, no, I was just going to say, I wonder when they're going to reboot that. Oh, they tried to reboot that with um, four dudes, four guys called Silver Foxes. It uh, didn't, didn't didn't make the past the pilot. Did did it have Blanche Dubois? It had George Takei. <laughs> oh, there you go. I think they were casting or oh thinking. My. Yeah, oh my! <laughs> um, so I usually uh, wear a Batman shirt. Gen- generally speaking, you know, a superhero shirt, but generally Batman. And while on the road trip, I saw this at like some supermarket and. Michigan, and I don't think I've gotten more compliments on a shirt I've ever owned than this Stay Golden cast photo from the Golden Girls. I love that you bought a shirt at the supermarket. Oh, (laughs) that's how it is, baby. That's That's just how it is. That's how they roll, yeah. Um, No, so, you know, I'm thinking now that we've gone so far down to this, if we want to do a sideshow just talking about the trip, we can do that versus I think so. taking another, because I, I think we're... 26 minutes in? Yeah, and we haven't touched on anything. The only fun thing is, like, at one point I realized... and uh, I'm not touching it. And, not and touching I, shouldn't, it. I shouldn't admit this, but it's true. On the road trip... Um, uh, it was, a, ni- uh, it was uh, a very 1970s road trip in which... Uh, Seat belts were kind of optional because um, I put the back seat down uh, on the Hyundai, and we have these Yogi Bowls, these industrial uh, bean bags that take up almost the whole thing. So I made a bed out of it with the idea sometimes it can lay down there and we pull up like the little guy. Probably 75% of his time, like even if I didn't even notice him, like him getting over there, uh, slept there. And then at one point, we left someplace and, and there was like a bunch of like, you know, food wrappers in the front of the car and I was thinking if this was the 70s I could just throw this out the car window why like stuff it in one bag and wait to get to the next rest stop when I could just throw it out and well I mean did you drive through Pennsylvania because it's always the 70s there <laughs> yes. I don't think they, I think you could smoke in airports over I there was, uh, we're ta- we're, we're touch on that on like you know because <laughs> yes there are some places in this country where smoking is still uh, encouraged and <laughs> Yeah, pretty, pretty marketed, pretty, pretty, pretty much. Well, I did. I did send you on the drive out Nothing there. Nothing tastes good like a cigarette should. No, Winston. Winston <laughs> tastes good like a, a cigarette. cigarette should. Uh, we were somewhere, and I took a photo of, like this barn of a candy store, like the biggest candy store, like this side of whatever, and they still sell candy cigarettes. I'm like, I thought, I literally thought you couldn't. I thought that they're like, hey. This is a bad idea, you know. Uh, well, you know, it's probably imported from China or something. You know, like it's kind of like the Ocean State job lot, or what, what do you know, like the you know, Harbor Freight Tools. I don't know if you know, like these um, offshoot hardware stores that are in this area. Like it's not Home Depot, but uh, it's a different kind of Chinese importer. Like you can get like the non UL rated oh, <laughs> electronics, okay. that kind of shit. So this is probably that version of a candy store. <laughs> I, it was only two percent asbestos. <laughs> asbestos is the bestest. Uh, but I did. I'm thinking that it's like okay, no seatbelt. This and maybe roll up the windows and start smoking. Right. You know? <laughs> I get a real '70s kind of, you know. Yeah. So we'll do that. We'll do, you we'll, got the we'll, farmer's tan going too. You, so you like that? Yeah. I, I, I honestly, I don't know. You have a farmer's tan, but I presume yes. He has the farmer's tan confirmed. This is the most I've been outdoors. Uh, let me do the math. Carry them ever, <laughs> like <laughs> like ever. Um, you know, I'll just say you know real quick. Thirty days start to finish. Fourteen days in parks, and and you know when we go to a theme park, there when it opens. I mean, we have so many photos. I think I sent you so many photos and videos of being the first one in the park, and people think we're crazy. But honestly, when we did like the Harry Potter ride at Universal. The boys were the first, like the second time. I'm like, yeah, I don't have to do this. I know it's awesome and it's great and it's going to make me so motion sick. It's going to ruin the next three hours. Um, but we were the, they were the boys were the first one on. They get on. It takes about, it's a long ride. And, and, and it takes a while to get the ride the way it snakes around. Anyways, they get on the ride, they get off, they come out the exit, and they, you know, you walk right by the entrance to the ride that is now 45 minutes long. Yeah. Like the park's been open five minutes. You've already done the ride. You walked right on, and it's up to 45 minutes. So, and so, anyways, but yeah, 14 parks. Uh, I don't know the average, but two days, the two days that we did at Disney with our friend, uh, friend of the podcast, Renetsky, both her and management um, have those uh, Apple watches that 
like count the steps and everything. And Renetsky's the first day was twelve point seven. Management's was twelve point four. So, you know, c- you know, kind of in the same. You know, twelve point seven steps. That's not a lot. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Can you imagine that miles in a day? Yeah, I remember you talked about that during the last podcast about they were they, yeah they basically ran a marathon between them. Right, and oh, well, us, all of us. So you know, so we're great, and and so, yeah, but that I'm outside and, the and whole so time. So slim looking, you are. Uh, Jim Gaffigan has said that before. It's like Disney is the only place you can walk ten miles and gain weight. <laughs> <laughs> I've I've shown that to be true. Okay, so we'll, we'll table all this. We'll do a. a a sideshow if, if if there's any interest um we can talk all about the trip and and rank the uh six flags from like you know bad to worse right. <laughs> you know um but so we, we will we'll just move on uh to yeah I, I i did have it here and i want to want to this this the stand up bit I've been talking about doing working out with you forever oh the one stand up i've completely forgotten about and in my head i did we're going through Somewhere outside of like, you know, the Northeast where you see lots of religious billboards, gigantic billboard like, you know, Christ is the answer. And I thought instantly and I I was pretty pleased with myself. I thought if the question is, what do you say when you hit your hand with a hammer? (laughs) And then I'm like, oh, what do you say if you hit yourself with a hammer nailing up a picture of Jesus? (laughs) No, and then and uh, you know then are that, you just giving this away on the yes, air? Yes, then it would then it would segue to the. You're not difference. supposed to workshop the stuff on the air, Between man. Jesus and a picture of Jesus. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You only mm-hmm. need the one nail for the picture. I, I but I, it, instantly, I thought Christ is the answer. I'm thinking, yes. If the question is, you know, uh-huh. you know, that'll play well. It, 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 you it, should tour with that. I really should. Uh, all right, so we will get busy. We're gonna get uh, funky. So I don't know. Should I even talk about this? The the where's my home? Is because I'm very conflicted um, since the trip. Is is my home Boston or L A? If if you have two homes, do you really have one? I mean, I feel out of place in both to a certain extent, um, but very conflicted. Where home, home is, is where you hang your PS4, uh, which we travel with us. <laughs> <laughs> as talked about, Jen, I tear up with me. Not that's a little good, yeah. but yeah, we will table that as well, so I don't go babbling on. But but that's that that's been a a dilemma in my head of like you know Wah, I have too many homes oh, oh do I do not have one it's like or will I never be happy will I you, you will, see the gypsies had no homes <laughs> the doors have no base um but seriously I, I go back and forth you know I, and I've talked to friends out there you know mostly John and stuff about that about um okay here I got this podcast I get to play you know in the band you know I get my mom and sister and I can afford a house out there, you know, I, I can play hockey, you know, I, I can't hear, but I can't, you know, do, yeah. can play hockey in a band and there's, I got, you know. Lots of people have two homes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no one has two homes. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, I think maybe you could just boil it down to whoever's in the Stanley Cup finals. Like if the Kings make it, yeah, there you my go. Home. Yeah, if the, uh, the Bruins are in it, yeah. Yeah, but let's never talk hockey for a long time. Okay. I'm still, I'm still. Uh, but I will talk uh, a little more comedy now, now that we've started to workshop that joke. Um, I, I sadly, how how excited have I been when Dennis Regan has liked something or retweeted something that I had posted? Oh my God, your boyfriend Dennis Regan, and, all about the Dennis Regan. I, I just, I just as of today, I, I just, I went back, I thought about the other day, and then today, I just unfollowed him, and and for no other reason except I've gotten a couple because he's liked things on other quote unquote comedians pages, and there's like one. You know, black comedian that he likes it is oh, really oh unfollow immediately really racist like oh, that one. he's like a fox you know you know have you seen I don't even want to say their name I'm trying to think I, I'm trying to remember the names but I don't even want to say it the two black women who go oh, on Fox News Diamond all the time and, Diamond and Pearl right or something like that and if you've ever watched it it's like Diamond and Silk and yeah. you and you watch and you're like this has to be an Onion thing this has to be a Saturday Night Live thing there can't be this. Awful. They're cartoony. Yeah. You know, they're like a failed seventies sitcom pilot. But they hate love Trump and hate, you know. And this other guy, you know, I, I forget what it I've seen a couple of his things. I'm like, well, maybe this is out of context. I went to his page and I was fall I looked at a lot of his stuff. It's like, oh yeah, he is uh he is not a good dude. And then yesterday or that was today, like Dennis Regan like tweeted that he's going to be again a guest on Mike Huckabee's show. 
Oh. And I'm like, Uh-oh. can't just I if like if that's your leanings, great. But there's no way uh You can't separate the racist him from the racist, <laughs> no, and, and like, and like, like he's not said anything that that's upset me. You know what I mean? But it's like, yeah, I just can't. I just can't. He's getting into Dennis Miller territory. I, I mean, that was, but Mike Huckabee is kind of the worst of the worst. You know, I mean, he's he's a really bad dude. Like he's up there with like the Rick Santorums of the world and stuff like that. Yeah, but so, Rick Santorum can't play a mean bass. He he can't. Not not like not like the Huckster can. No. Uh, and then talking about comedy. So here's the other funny thing we've talked before. The irony that that my oldest and now the youngest have jumped on the bandwagon. They've heard jokes online that they've retold, and they've been kind of funny. Like a couple of weeks ago, I used one of theirs. So you know, it's like, what if the little boy dropped the ice cream, got hit by the bus? Uh, but then he told a couple of jokes that I kind of I've told before, but they can be misconstrued really easily. They need to be handled with care, very, very much so. Um, which he doesn't. Get like that, and we're, we're basically for and the irony again of me having to tell somebody where the line is, even if he is eleven years old. Um, you know, and the other thing, so uh, we were driving, and he was showing me some stuff on YouTube like the day before that we were joking about. We watched a couple times that are funny, but sight gag funny, and a cartoon that he showed that we. Ju- and he was trying to retell it to his mom who were driving, and, and I'm like, dude, it's not. It was upsetting me so much he kept trying to tell a joke that wasn't going to be funny, and the wor- the more he explained it, the worse it got. You know what? You just got to let him fall off the bike. He's I, never going to learn. Well, yes. Um but but I just can't take that pain. You know I mean, it's he like, was scraping both knees across the asphalt right. for a mile and a half. And uh, and so and, and then one of the other things. So he watched this, this this video and it was Yoda telling Star Wars related jokes, and they were all punny, play on words, not you know nothing, no, nothing bad at all. But you know they're like groany kind of chuckle laughs. They don't transfer well, and then. Yoda would tell a joke, and then he would say, mm, a funny joke, you know? And so f- f- saying funny joke as Yoda is what my 11-year-old says all the time now. The problem is he makes it sound – he sounds like he's doing a bad Asian accent of something, <laughs> and out of context, <laughs> it just sounds really racist. Well, maybe he shouldn't say, ah, so, before <laughs> – and, and put the hands together and do the little bow. Yeah. Know? But uh, and I've tried to say – it's like, dude – it, I, I'm like, that sounds like. Oh, by the way, half Asian. So he's got license. Quarter. All right. Quarter. Okay. Quarter. I'm you know, sorry. Hey, you, know. you can't round that up. No. No. Hey, if one thing they don't do is screw around with math, <laughs> you know, they're, they're sticklers for that. See, I. Well, can if he's say- only a quarter Asian, he's bad at math. Thank you. So, like, round up to the half. Yeah, whatever. But he, but seriously, out of context, it does. And it goes to his goal where there's a lot of different, you know, and it's like, dude, you can't. Yeah. And I'm like, it'd be one thing if people knew you were doing a Yoda impression. First of all, your Yoda impression sucks. Like, yeah, I was like, going to say, like, it, well, you're yelling at him for the wrong thing. He's doing a weak Yoda. Get on that. That is bad parenting. And then out of context, it's like, dude, if you were doing a bunch of, Star Warsy jokes and then said that may, maybe it flies, but let's let's just shelf that for now. Let's, well, I like to hear the jokes he's telling and then saying a oh, funny joke. You know, right, uh, exactly. well, yeah. What's the context? Context is king, uh, and, and that's the fact that I'm having these. And, and that was part of the drive. I mean, we had these nice talks about different things, and that was one of them. And like explaining to my nine-year-old the subtleties of context. You know what? This is the time for him to fail miserably because he'll have so much time to learn. I mean, you know? There's failing miserably and... and Embarrassing the family name. A, and two, this really isn't the right time to have kids telling jokes or using an accent that could be misinterpreted as being Trump supporters. <laughs> you know? Hey, he could get a guest spot on Mike Huckabee. You, you're <laughs> crushing his... Life dream, I'm sure. Oh, well, okay. Enough of the good stuff. I guess one dream crushing deserves another. It's, thank you. They, how do you guys like it? <laughs> oh, soul skunk. <laughs> um, but uh, let, let's get into the week of awful. All right. Did you watch the Mueller testimony? Um, just the highlights because it was on during Great what do you call it? Uh, work hours. It was during, <laughs> I was at work, unfortunately. But, you know... Honestly, I knew 
deep down in my heart of hearts, there wasn't going to be a whole lot said in that uh, hearing that was going to be revelatory and smoking gunish because basically Mueller went in there begrudgingly and with a muzzle saying, uh, look, you uh, can't say anything that hasn't already been said or interpreted by your report. Uh, that's it. I think they did a very good job of lowering my expectations going in. So I, I think it went a little better than I thought it was going to, only, only because my expectations were so low. I mean, just 24 hours before, Barr comes out and, and he sends him a memo saying you can't say all this stuff. Mueller was really clear like a few weeks ago when he gave his nine-minute press conference and had no questions answered saying this is all I'm going to say about it. But – and it was, it was awful some the way Republicans would ask him questions. And, and seriously, I, I, I would turn down the radio because I was driving during Moster. I would turn the radio down when they were asking him questions because they were asking questions like, why weren't you investigating the link between Hillary and the Russians? Yeah. Like, like it, wait, as soon as they say that, it's like, okay, well, this yeah. is just – you know, it's like, oh, and those two – the, the two investigators who were having an affair, who out there treat it's like, well, why weren't you investigating them more? It's like, well, we fired them instantly, and well, we removed them from the case, you know. And um, it, but I was actually surprised, and Jimmy Kimmel mentioned this on his monologue. He was, I was, I was surprised to hear how old Mueller sounded. You know, like he seemed kind of like yeah, a little doddering. Maybe doddering is the wrong word, but. You know, um, kind of uh, almost like me right now trying to explain how Mueller sounded. He did. He actually, and and when it was announced that he was going to have like one of the lead investigators, like kind of, I don't want to say like the guy was an assistant. This guy's like a senior director of whatever there with him um, that Blotus lost his shit because he was going to have somebody else to kind of maim. And it seemed like, why would he need this other person? I think it was to kind of. But but it was it was a huge. Kind of, he was the rudder basically to steer the ship. Steer, so that, yeah, and and so no, and th- what was interesting is so he was a special counsel's counsel. They started with, you know, the Russian stuff. Uh, they started with uh, you know some of the other stuff, the obstruction stuff, and then did the Russian stuff later. What was great is that he flat out did say. I, I mean, and and again, it was funny during the drive. I was listening to most of it. And at like a rest stop, I went to MSNBC, HuffPost, CNN, just really quick to see the head pages and then the Fox page. And of course, the Fox page is like nothing going on in Washington. No, it, it was exactly what I is just the said. Earth flat. <laughs> it, it, it was like let's see what sugar and spice has to say about you. Know. No, but it was diamond like, and silk. Six of one, two dozen right. of the other. I think that's actually what's in my refrigerator right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting a tall glass of diamond silk. Then. Uh, no, but it would it would it would triumph the, you know, senator so and so from Racistville, Kentucky asks like, what about the Hillary emails? <laughs> they really should change their name. <laughs> no, they're uh, proud of it. No, I'm talking about Kentucky. Okay, uh, but but the fact that the fact that flat out he was asked, it's like, did your report exonerate the president? No, they're saying it exonerated. Can you clarify? Did it? Uh, no. Did your report say, you know, there's enough to indict him, but you didn't indict him because he's a city president? Because the attorney general said that he, the way he interprets the law right. is that a sitting president can't be indicted. And on, can on he be? Can he be tried? Uh, can he be? Can he be arrested for these crimes? After yes, I like. It almost got to the point where one of the Democratic senators was like, "Are you not not saying that Trump is not a criminal?" And then you know, Mueller was like, "Hmm, what?" Time out. What? <laughs> but he, cl- he he flat out said, yes, it was obstruction. Yes, these are crimes he can be indicted for after office. And no, I like clearly that was not mincing words. You know, did this report exonerate him? No. And he asked him a couple of times. Within a half hour after the hearing, the the White House released the press statement. Total exoneration. Total exoneration. Right. Mueller says a total exoneration. Uh, and at the same time, within hours, and I'm, I'd have to ask, you know, a lawyer friend, maybe John again, um, what is a writ? But oh, like a it's a 
it, right. It's some sort of legal document, like asking for or demanding some sort of information from a party or something like that. The state of New York is well underway of getting his tax returns, and like they sent a writ to the court. Um, trying to get an emergency ju- injunction against the state of New York asking for his taxes after this because it was brought up, you know, again, was he doing business in Russia while running for president? Yes. Did, did these business dealings go on after he took office? Yes. And so that's one of the big things. Like, how much is he benefiting, you know, from that? And we'll, and we'll get into turns out he's not the only one really, really, really benefiting from Russian money. I'm just actually very upset that I blew the opportunity to answer what is a writ with me going, excuse me, writs. <laughs> we, we, can, we can edit this all no. way down, go back. No, I'm not, yeah. I'm, please, oh, more work for Joe. <laughs> no, no problem. Um, but You like fries with that? The, <laughs> the, um, but the scary thing is the second half of the day, as the day went on, Mueller woke up more. And people were saying, this is when the Marine came out. This is when the real Patriot came out. This is when the guy whose hair is on fire because we are under attack from the Russians with our elections. And could not have been more clear that the Russians not only interfered in the election, and of course they interfered for for, for Trump, and, but it's happening now. And he was hitting every – and the same thing when he gave that nine-minute you know, statement a few weeks ago. Yes, there's obstru- – well, he didn't say yes, there's obstruction. Yes. He basically was saying, yeah, this report lays it all out. He kept saying it's like it lays it all out there. There's obstruction. There's collusion. There's all these things. But this right here, the fact that our elections are 100 percent attack – you know, from Russia, and if we don't do anything about it now, it's only going to get worse. And he was even asked, do you think it's happening? You know, how serious is it? And he said, as we're sitting here talking, it is happening right now. I think it happened to me because I downloaded that face app by Russian <laughs> developers, and I think they stole my right to vote. <laughs> yeah, bro. <laughs> um, I think they got my voter registry information from my phone somehow. They, uh, did, yeah, did you send me your picture. I'm like... He, Oh my God! That's exactly what you are going to look like. It, it's it's kind of my dad. And oh, I'm is like, it? Yeah, kind kind of my dad. Yeah, kind of. Um, yeah, but I'm mean, I'm not looking like that. I'm committing suicide in like two <laughs> weeks, man. I mean, um, I mean, I'm not. I'm I'm happy. Uh, Everything. I'm happy. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, his hair was on fire about the Russian stuff, um, and, and so and so that's scary. So so I'm going to transition. We now clearly 100% emphatically know um, that Mitch McDonald is is the Mitch McConnell. Mitch Mitch McConnell is probably, and I can't believe I'm going to say this, is probably a bigger piece of shit than Trump. Probably a bigger piece of shit than Trump. Because he knows better? No, because it, well, things are now starting to come out that we had talked about before on this podcast that we had talked about. When there was there was a I cannot remember the oligarch's name that Mitch McConnell lifted the sanctions on, mm. and within 24 hours, uh, that guy committed 200 million dollars to open a new aluminum plant in his uh, state. Aluminium, aluminium. Thank you. And uh, and it's the same thing. You go down. And he's just the biggest piece of shit. If if for no other reason, I think that the. Uh, uh, the House had passed that 9-11 bill, like 420 to 11. 420 to 12, one independent and 11 piece of shit Republicans uh, had turned down that bill. But it was a clean bill, overwhelming, you know, bipartisan, gets passed to the House and he he tabled it. Like, mm-hmm. like just, just – how do you look at those first responder families and say um, – Politely, respectfully, go fuck yourself. I don't care. You're dying of cancer. Easy. You don't. Yeah, right. Thank, you, don't look at, you. you don't look at them straight in the eye. You know. You but just the, put your head back in your shell, <laughs> and then you <laughs> mosey on to your slimy <sighs> hole in the ground. I mean, and the same thing. It's like you know. Oh, the, by the way, speaking of which, did you? I mean, that's a Pulitzer Prize winning photo of John Stewart standing outside with his. Uh, with that smirk as Mitch McConnell is heading, have you seen this photo yeah. of, of Mitch McConnell heading in to vote uh, for the, uh, the the Senate bill? 
and it's um yeah it, the, I mean bigger pieces of shit I think on the nine eleven bill was Rand Paul and uh, oh yeah and that other guy but I mean that's just you know the making a name for himself on the backs of nine eleven victims eh whatever that's fine that's politics for you and then um but then you know the whole thing with go back where you came from and somebody's like do you think it's racist well blah 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 Has, what if somebody said it to your wife his wife who's uh, you know I mean who's from China. Oh, well, she's here legally, so no one would say that to her, basically, you know? It's like, dude, you just... The first lady is not from this country. Right. Right. But she's... But she's white. She's white. Right. So, so... Eh. Dude, I mean... Are you saying there are bad things and the world is an ugly place? And there are things that we can't change? Let's talk about one good thing. What? Um, Please tell me that you saw the fake presidential seal (laughs) behind the president. Because when I sent the rundown, did you look at the email? Yeah, and I, I had seen that last night. Um, that is incredible because not only does it um, have two heads on the eagle, yep. there's a banner that says 45 is a um, is a tyrant. Puppet. Oh, it's a puppet. In Spanish. In Spanish. And it, the... Spanish. the ta- not even Not even, not Latin. even Latin. You're yeah. right, right. Well, Latina. Right. Latino. Uh, but then the eagle also is bearing a Russian coat of arms. Yep, with little hammers and circles instead of stars. <laughs> and, the, and the talons are holding uh, golf clubs. And a wad of cash. And a wad of, oh, yeah, I missed the cash. Yeah, the, the, instead of an olive leaf. It's like a highlights ol- photo. Right. What's wrong with this photo? Instead of an olive branch, it's a pile of green cash. And if you looked at it really closely, you wouldn't really notice. But the best thing is it was, and I'm not kidding, I don't. I do not know the name of the party, but it was a like a like a white Christian youth group. Um, there's no other. Th- you, how do you not equate it to Hitler Youth? I mean, it yeah. was just. But I mean, that was obviously put up on purpose. Like somebody trolled the president right. of the United States, and this is like something that was projected onto him. It wasn't like you know done it, in post production. Behind him for an hour. Yeah. Nobody for an hour while he stood there. Ranting to these, like the Hitler Youth, yeah. with that, like there was a regular presidential seal on one side, and then this one, and the people who created that seal, I, I think I wrote down like one term Donny dot com is or uh, one one term Donny dot org. I think it's one term Donny dot com that sells and promotes all this, you know, paraphernalia. Uh, but they're the ones that created that logo, and I think that's my favorite part. That forty five. Is a puppet, it's, you know. Maybe they should be called like Trumpeteers or something, you know. Like, you know, we don't want to give Hitler a bad name, you know. It's, <laughs> it's not sully. And again, with us focusing on this shiny, awful Mueller investigation and all these stuff, no, nobody in the media is taught. I, I literally, uh, you know, scrolling that day and the next couple days, the same day of the Mueller investigation or the Mueller hearing. Trump vetoed the the bipartisan uh, rejection of that Saudi arms deal. Both the both the Senate had turned down the Republican controlled Senate had turned down that arms deal uh, to Saudi Arabia. Uh, the you know and and it was like what six months earlier when when the Republican controlled Senate. Uh, voted to end support of the war Saudi's war in Yemen, and Blotus overturned, vetoed it. No one's talking about the fact that he unilaterally is selling arms to Saudi Arabia. Just literally, the rest of the country, even his own party, is saying, "No, we're not selling Saudi Arabia all these arms." But nobody mentioned it because it was all about the 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 laser pointer and where all the cats on the floor are following the red, you know. Dot across the living room. Well, let's not also forget that the attorney general is now announced or uh, had announced yes uh, Friday or whatever fucking day it was. Maybe it was Thursday. There, uh, the, the the federal government is now reinstating capital punishment. You can kill non, You can kill them darkies faster now. It's us, Saudi Arabia. I think there's only three countries or four countries in the world where. Uh, where capital punishment is still a federal law, but I, but I didn't. So I didn't realize that. I mean, I know it's state to state with the death penalty, but I didn't realize that the attorney general can just like flip a switch. Yep. Oh. Yep. Oh. 
That's nice. And that, that was easy. That plays really well with the bass. Yes. Really, really well with the bass. And, and again, you know who plays really well with the bass? Racism? No, Mike Huckabee. <laughs> I hate you. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to go over here that and does, That deserves uh, the death penalty, right? <laughs> if anything. No, that's an award-winning segue, but I'm going to go cry now. Okay, well, while you're you know crying, maybe we'll um, earn some hard needed ca- hard needed cash. Ah, put a sentence together, you fuck. <laughs> Listen to these defunce. <laughs> fuck me. Listen to these defunce. You're lying, George. You're lying. <laughs> you really think I ought to swear? Yes, goddamn it, George, swear. Listen to a defunct sponsor, you dumbasses. Wow. What you eating, babe? Nothing, honey. Oh, you can tell me. Kellogg's Nothing Honey Crunch. So what makes it taste so good? Nothing, honey. Oh. Kellogg's Nothing Honey Crunch. Looks good, Private. What is it? Nothing, honey. You love the honey, you love the nuts. When you've got the special taste of nuts and honey all wrapped up in a hearty crunch, what more can you say? Looks good, Sergeant. What is it? Kellogg's Nothing Honey. Nothing, honey. Crunch. So, I'm still not ready to talk sport because, uh, no, there's only two sports that really matter, and one of them I might never talk about again, and the other one is the Patriots season, so I'm not really ready to talk sport, except for the fact, uh, and I sent it to you, it was about a week or so, I don't think we talked about it on the last podcast, the the cycle of a Patriots fan season, it, it, it's it's like a little graft, and it start, help me out, it starts off, um, I don't remember it, it starts off, the year starts off by Winning the Super Bowl, then lose a bunch of free agents, um, have an underwhelming draft, lose two games early in the first season. I got it. Okay, go ahead. Read it. Uh, uh, yeah, lose two games early in the season. Everyone says that the dynasty is over. Lose to the Dolphins in Miami. Somehow become the underdogs and win a bunch of games. Win the Super Bowl. Lose a ton of free agents. Then lose two games early in the season. <laughs> Is that not exactly how the last 20 years of our lives have gone? And I like there's a little arrow pointing between a couple of cycles and saying that the Patriots are here. <laughs> <laughs> and the lose to Miami thing, it's like... Of course. That that literally is the most brilliant thing. And camps are starting and all that stuff. But yeah, I'm, I'm, still, I'm still at least a week or two away from... I mean, it's still July. You know, what the fuck? I mean, we're not... I think it's like five weeks from the posting of this. This is the, the Patriots started training camp, right? But you know, when 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 the roster when the roster goes from I think you start the camp with six hundred and fourteen players. I'm not I'm not exactly sure. You know, uh, when you see players who like you know have like the symbol for pie, you know, because they ran out of numbers. You know, when they whittle it down to let's say sixty players. Yeah, right. <laughs> Crying emoji. Get back in line. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, so, so, so we're still a ways out of that. But we are not far away from talking games. Uh, so since we last talked, mm-hmm. playing any games? Uh, what am not I? Not just with my emotions? You know, that line just keeps getting funnier every time you Does, overuse it. Because <laughs> I, I, I was, I was going to stop. But if, <laughs> if, if, if you're saying it's getting funnier. You know? Um, no, not a not a ton of games. Although, so last week we had a very intense heat wave uh, hit the New England area, and my house is not air conditioned. So what did we do? Well, we decided to take um, a nice, you know, family weekend. We you know get a hotel, maybe see some sights, uh, go a mile and a half away from our house. Stay indoors, never leave the hotel because we don't have air conditioning. But in that time, I played a couple of games on my my Raspberry Pi, the emulator. Oh. You know, just catching up on some stuff that I've never played before, like TurboGrafx-16 games, you know. Um, very boring, esoteric, too boring for me to even mention by name on this podcast. But How many uh, systems did you bring to the hotel with you? Just, oh, uh, we, we had the Switch. Okay. And um, one of my sons brought his 3DS, and then I had the Raspberry Pi, but I also had the Apple TV. Okay. But I only had one HDMI cable that I was swapping between. Oh. The but we had two TVs. And I know nobody has two no television two sets. TVs, um, but, you know, we, uh, yeah, aside from that, 
not a whole lot of game and go on on. One thing, one gaming thing I do want to mention that dropped today as we're recording this is that so the do the new Doom Eternal is coming out for PS4 and all, and I think Switch might be getting one version of it. It's the sequel to the the, the Doom reboot that came out a couple of years ago, which your little one played at the age of ten. Uh, <laughs> but to celebrate, sounded a little judgy, and he was nine, <laughs> right? But uh, to BFG. celebrate that coming out in a couple of weeks, I think I don't even know when that's coming out on the Nintendo Switch. Just sort of out of nowhere, they made available for download. I think you have to pay for it. Doom one, two, and three. So you can play the original old school '90s Doom games and the you know the the third game, which isn't that good. But Dooms one and two are now available on your Nintendo Switch, which everybody owns. <laughs> uh, wife sent me, which you you probably showed her, and then she sent it to me. The new Switch is coming out. The 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 Switch Lite that I guess you can't doesn't have the ability to like. Play it on your big TV. It's a bit. It's essentially a big portable. It's a portable version of the Switch. Like so you the can't, remotes don't come off. Yeah, the, there's no Joy Cons, which are fine because now there's. Do you know that there's this thing going on that's been going on for since it came out? The the Joy Con uh, drift that that happens on your analog stick. So like, there's this anomaly. The the sticks for the Switch Joy Con uh, Joy Cons aren't made to last. What? <laughs> so, I know I had to replace my one of my Joy Cons like almost immediately, like when I first got the Switch, because it would do this thing where, you know, it would break down after a certain amount of time, a month, <laughs> and even if it was centered, your game, like the who, who you know, your your character would start moving to the left and moving to the right or whatever. And what's worrisome now is that if they don't fix that on the Switch Lite, if they have the same problems, you can't fucking switch, you know, you can't just get a new Joy-Con. You're like, uh, I just spent 200 bucks on a thing with a fucking broken controller. So hopefully they, they, they get off their asses, Nintendo, and make make it right. So there's that. But yeah, I think that's the, right. So you can't switch out the Joy-Cons and you can dock it to your TV for the Switch Lite. But it has a bigger screen, longer battery. Or, uh, no, wait, it's, it's a smaller screen? No, bigger screen, but of a longer battery life. So that's good. Um, and, um, and it comes in three colors, and who cares? Uh, I, I tell you, we're probably going to get one, so I'll complain about it. But yeah, uh, the, the controllers for the Switch, we were on, we were on controllers number three, set number three. Um, granted, you know, my kids don't take like the most gingerly control, but seriously, let's just, you're used to remote, you know, controllers lasting a little longer, just the wear and tear. Also, we've gone through two car adapters and two wall plugs. They just, and, and, and it's not like, like, Third party plugs that don't work. I mean, go into GameStop and get like the Nintendo because things tend, you know, Apple phones charge better with Apple Charge. It's just the way it works. Yep. It's, and it's like, the, you know, and again, you know, um, my kids are, are very much like uh, Lenny from of Mice and Men. Um, <laughs> they, they've killed their fair share of mice, petting them in the, their pockets. But, but still, it seems like the Switch stuff just wears out. A lot quicker than than yeah. Though, I, I'm I'm disappointed in the build quality of the Switch, but yeah, thank God my kids um, take kind of good care of it. But still, it's just like you, you know, it, even if you you know use it just a little bit or a little too much, um, they could fall apart. But and they're like sixty bucks each or something. Right. It's crazy. So you know, I have like original Nintendo controllers that still right. work. You know, I, they, I mean, the controls we grew up with, you go. <laughs> Uh -huh. Wow, we're 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 really going down the walking uphill both ways to school in the snow. And in my day, cop. in my day, we had uh, two buttons and a D pad. That's the way we played games, and we liked, liked it. it like that. No, but you could wear the shit oh, out God. of control. I threw them. I right. I bit them. I was so you know out of frustration because I'm a mental person, but they still worked. After I the fact. may. Or may not have in high school had a friend who she would uh, use it as a would do kind of a trick where they would actually play a game with it, like uh, without her hands. Without her hands, I see. And, and now again, I may or may not have had a friend who did that. She did it, and, and they worked. You know, 
Oh, oh. <laughs> slippery afterward. But uh, that's they, those things took beatings, and now these little fucking talk about taking a licking. Anyway, so. <laughs> she was whacked. Oh man. Um. All right. I'm well, need to be alone. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna stand up you for know, that five minutes. Right. I think there's actually uh, a category on Pornhub <laughs> with that same exact but, um, but, yeah. genre. But, okay. So. What have I been playing? Glad you asked. Um, as we had talked, my little guy had a meltdown. A meltdown. I wouldn't let him take his PS4 across the country. Are they melting down like these M&Ms? Because I only, because being the monster I am, I only let them take the old iPhones that have games on them, their iPads, their brand new Kindles, and the Switch in the car. Like Only four different types of devices, one for each. Eight screens in the car. Because, again, I'm a monster. And I said no to the PS4. Renetsky had a PS4, so they're like... And, and I ended up being in the store, and those fuckers at GameStop had a sign, like, you know, it's like a, it was a buy one, get one half off thing. And there was a couple... There was like three... I was going to buy Resident Evil 5, you know, and let Renetsky keep it. And they didn't have... Like, Resident Evil 2 was still... Forty-five bucks for a used copy. Yeah, like I can't do that. Like if it was twenty, I could do it. And the same thing. They they didn't sell. They didn't have any first Batman, but they had a two pack of um, um, Gotham City and um, yeah. Arkham Knight. Arkham City and Arkham, Arkham Knight. Knight. And and, the, and those two were like, you know, there's like a two pack for like fifty bucks. But there was a few, a few Resident Evil games. And it's interesting, you know, we should have Chris back on because that canon is bigger than I thought. And these were newer games, but they, and, and I don't know if this is normal in the video game world. You can tell me, but they weren't, um, they weren't like brand new games, like we're, we're, we're years in development. Yeah, they're like these little side games, like these like stop gaps or side quests kind of things. And and they're full on games. I mean, you know, if if you're good at the game from start to finish, it would take you know twelve hours. You know, from start if you if you knew how to get through the games and how to get out of all the rooms and all the challenges. I mean, they're real games, and they're not blocky controllers. But at the same time, it's not as fluid as like two mm-hmm. or five or six or seven or yeah, something they're like. That. like they're like double A games. They're not triple A, you know, billion dollar budget games. And yeah. they're good, but like like the monsters. That, that are, they, are they are they developed by? I mean, this is a nerdy question. Are they all Capcom? Yeah, I mean, it's all licensed by Capcom. But may, maybe they have like like Capcom isn't developing it. Like maybe it's like a another you know smaller developer that's using the license and Capcom's throwing their name on and as publisher and you know that, maybe it's one. Yeah. Of, but I took. Uh, you know, and it's just great to be able to have uh, a true expert in the field. And so I took pictures of all the ones, and I'm sending it to our friend Chris. And I'm like, "Which one do I get? Oh, this one. This one looks better and plays better, but this one story is better. I like that." And so I took his feedback into consideration, and I bought them both. <laughs> um, but I've only played one. I've only been playing, and I like it. Resident Evil. Uh, Resident Evil Revelations 2. Mm-hmm. Uh, Electric I, Boogaloo. <laughs> everything that has a 2 into it, <laughs> legally. Ah. If I'm ever in a position of power, I won't be taking <laughs> foreign aid from Russia or making people you know, pay their taxes so I can play golf at my own golf course and charge people. But I will incite a law. So South Dakota will be called North Dakota 2 Electric, Electric Boogaloo. Boogaloo. Yes! And... Um, uh, but but it was it's like you know I played in in the last thirty five days I've played a video game system for like once at Renetsky's house because we had a down day I played for like two or three hours and it was good um, and then when I, you know I came back home like this morning was the first time like the little guys were still sleeping I'm like oh I can get like an hour and you know and, and just kind of. Um, but it's good. It's good. I'm glad I got it. You know, by the time I have, I see you next, I will have played it the entire week. You will have 200 percent of it. <laughs> I'm I'm almost tempted to get that DLC for Spider Man PS4. Let's get back to the Spider Man mm-hmm. movie. Um, there was a scene which you must have loved when he's fighting the the first time he's fighting, and I think it's a water monster. The first time that Spider Man is fighting him, mm-hmm. and he 
picks up granite or gravel and he no, and he swings it around like he does at his game and throws. Oh you know? right, yeah. Well, the other thing about um, the other video game kind of ish is, I mean, it's I don't want to spoil it because it's at the end. It's at the post, one of the post end credits, but a character comes back. Do you know what I'm talking about? Joe Jana. J. Jonah Jameson, Jameson comes back, and, it, and it's you know it's um, oh what's his name? Oh come on, uh, what's his name? Juno's dad. Yeah. Oh uh, come on. Oh lord. I mean Whiplash, dude. What's his name? I forget. All I think is J. Jonah Jameson. That's all I can think of. But his character is just like the character of J. Jonah Jameson in the video game, where he's this Infowars type guy who has his own show. He's no longer with the Daily Bugle, and he makes a, an announcement. But here he was in the Daily Bugle. It was like DailyBugle.net or something. Right. Like, uh, yeah. And he also, uh, but he also played the same character. Was it in the Tobey Maguire one? Yeah, yeah. No, it's J- yeah. That they brought back J. Jonah Jameson f- in this universe right. from, from the that, Sam, which from I the Sam was Raimi so movies. Great. Yeah. Um, but anyways, so yeah, the, the, I might be. I might get. I've been playing a little bit of the uh, the new game plus for Marvel Spider Man on PS4, and I may be maybe getting the DLC. I don't know. It's twenty five bucks. Eh. Now what time is it? Uh, time to bust a rhyme. Nah, G. Time for a random video game review of the. Oh, remember those things? Oh, it's been a long time since I wasted my time. Been a long time, been a long time, been a long, lonely, 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 lonely time. I love (laughs) ACDC. Oh, that's so good. Yep, so, okay, while I was uh, making your ears bleed, Jacques picked a game off of my video game wall, and I think it's a PS4 game, and I hope it's on Marvel Spider-Man, because it's out of order, so I don't really know what you pulled off. Uh, and, and now that you say it, it's definitely out of order, because this is... Is the system out of order? The whole thing. <laughs> you can't handle the truth. <laughs> what is it? I don't know. What does it start with? Let me g- g- give me a give me a letter. What does it start with? Uh, let me see if I can give you. A is it heavy clue. rain? No, that's not. A, uh, Chubby rain. <laughs> Chocolate um, rain. No, oh. Chocolate rain. Oh, you don't know what Chubby rain is? No. Do you remember the movie? Do you see Bowfinger with Steve no. Martin? No. Oh, Steve Martin and Eddie Murphy. Yeah, I never saw it. Okay, so Eddie Murphy. Plays two roles. There's a famous actor that's and played by dummy, Eddie Murphy, yeah, and this like dummy guy, who, and a guy who looks just like him. So they, they, you know, yeah. So it's like Dave, where they try to swap him out or something. But like Eddie that. Murphy doesn't. The, the big actor doesn't know he's in a movie, and this, this. But it's a science fiction movie, and the aliens come down and large drops of rain. Like it, when, when the chubby rain is how they oh, I infiltrate. So, uh, I know okay. Chubby right. rain. It's a right. long I'm, way to go. I'm going to shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. My dreams have come true. <laughs> and yours, too. Well, what is it? I don't know. It is, oh, Deadpool. You know what? I, I, um, I watched my uh, older son, Connor, beat this when he was, he bought this because he was a, he's a big Deadpool fan or fair weather fan. Like, he doesn't read all the comics, or maybe he does. Maybe he gets them online somehow. But uh, he's a, um, a Deadpool fan, and he did play this. It's a, it's a, it's a funny game. It's, um, it, it was 20 bucks and worth every penny. Nice. So, it's a, you know, it's, a, it's rated M. Is it's it based it, on one of the movies? No, it's um I think it came I mean it came out after the movie, but it's not based on a movie. It has its own story. Fun fact, Deadpool can't be circumcised. Mm. <laughs> think about that for a minute. Okay. <laughs> uh <clears throat> and it's um, you know, it's it, it's uh, it's a neat kind of beat 'em up um Three D exploring game. I think you have to collect collect certain items, I think. But it's not a big collect a thon. It's pretty linear. And uh, but it's funny. Um, it's a decent game. It has an insane action combo skills capture all my good sides. Oh, I'm just reading off the box now. It's out of context. It's a one player game. It's in color and uh, in stereo where available. So that uh, it, it, it's for the PS4. And it um, this is like me doing a book report without playing the game or reading the book. Um, it's a fun game. And I liked it, and I played it a little, a little bit, and it was fun. 
and I stopped playing it, and now it's on my shelf. And see, but I didn't. I've so not chubby seen that. rain. I'm not. I hate you. I've not seen that before up on the shelf. Yeah, yeah. Maybe it was upstairs, but uh, you know, hey, if you want to, if the kids want to borrow it, you know, it's right down. Oh, it doesn't bother me. As you've already pointed out, thank you, Sir Douchelot. I have a rated X game up there if you want some. <laughs> if they like Korean porn games, I got <laughs> a whole stack of them. Um, so, what have you been watching? <laughs> now that we had this whole rant earlier about, about television, yeah. What am I watching? Huh. Good question. I've been watching, you know, the summer fun and games on ABC, the press your lucks and match games and sadness. Still as happy as w- those when I left. You all, you all a glow. Oh yeah, they're, they had just started. They are, they are good. Uh, I like, I like card sharks. I watch, uh, you know, I wa- I'm wasting a lot of time, I'm wasting, a frittering away my middle ages. Oh my god, my middle age, not middle ages. That's an era of time. Um, <laughs> <clears throat> it's uh what else am I watching on what am I streaming? Um come on, get into my history. Prepare for the show. Do something that's gonna make people wanna listen to the next episode. I can't. I have I, I'm not well whatever you watch, it's more entertaining than mine. I haven't watched anything. Yeah, I mean you've been on the road living life. Literally, I have not watched a darn thing and I miss it. <laughs> you, know, <it's> like, <laughs> you know, I mean there was a little there's a you know, it's no, it's been one of the best months of my life. It has been unbelievably great. Uh, but the wife has had like nine days at home to catch up. Like she's watched the entire Handmaiden. Um, oh, the Handmaid's Tale. E- tale. Uh, St- Stranger Things three. We we are going to watch that this weekend as a family because we we were you know when she by the time she got to L A. It, it it dropped when she was in L A. Oh, I don't know if I sent you the pictures. Have you seen it? Uh, Stranger yes. Things. I haven't seen anything. I just know that Scoops Ahoy is in there. Yeah. And, oh, yeah. And the, they turn the Baskin Robbins in Burbank, California, into a Scoops Ahoy. Now, we were going to go on the way, dropping management off at the airport on July 14th. Um, she was flying home, and the line was over two hours long. So we dropped her off, and... I forget who I was talking was just talking to you. I was talking to somebody and they're like, Oh, well, if you want to see that, you better go there today because it's the last day. And we drove back. And by that point, it was three hours long just to get in there. But we took all that we got out. You know, we walked and we took the pictures like outside of it and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And the poor people who work at Baskin Robbins had to dress up in the Scoops Ahoy outfit for like that month. It's such a, it is a good season. It's a funny, it's a funny season. It's a little bit of a departure from the spookiness of the first season or two. But I think it's I think it fits well in the universe. It's a nice break, but it doesn't get too far away from the spookiness and the craziness. The upside down. Yeah, I mean, right. There's more. There's more of the upside down in the right side up. Okay. So, uh, but we are we're looking forward to seeing that. Um, but there was there was that little twinge. It's like oh, she's watched. You know, all these things. Like, the only thing I've watched since being back, because we've only been back a couple days, is like last night, everybody, you know, was asleep and I was awake. I was on the DCU app. And I'm like, <laughs> you know, there's all this new content out there. And I'm like, hey, I haven't watched The Watchmen in a couple of years. So <laughs> I watched The Watchmen again. Um, Who watches The Watchmen? You know, it, it's, it's great. It is really, really, really great. And I think. There's, there's only a couple things in there that are really, and that I wouldn't really want the almost 12 year old. But uh, I think I'm gonna if he reads a graphic novel because I think I was tw- like, yeah, well, no, it was 95 when it came out, so I'm 16 when that came out, so maybe it's a little ahead of the curve. But 16 in 1985 is 12, and oh, 2000. You said yeah, 95. I'm sorry, in, in 85, <laughs> in 85 it came out and stuff like that. Um, and I and I and I did. It's like I. Remember, like the last time I watched it, and cinematographer Felix speaking. I don't know. Uh, they there's this one great scene. You like at the very beginning where the comedian gets thrown out a window, and it looks exactly like it did in the comic. Like the the shards of glass. I mean, it, like every piece of glass looks just like it did. Like in the comic That's and stuff great. like that. It is, you know. And it's funny because recently on Twitter, there's been a couple like Easter egg things that I follow. And they're like, oh, in the opening credits, you can see that like, you know, this 
first wave of superheroes, uh, you know, had to like, you know, save Bruce Wayne's parents yeah. in like an alley. And, oh, wow. And, right. And it's like, say, so he would not have existed in this universe. Like, that's why Batman didn't exist in the oh, universe wow. because he was, he, you know, the, the robber was thwarted by. It's kind of like the, uh, in, the, teen, the Teen Titans go to the movies. Yes. <laughs> yes. How fucking great is that sequence when they have to like go back in time and they're like trying to fix. Uh, all the superheroes to make their you know origin stories disappear. Anyway, the the, the, the thing you saw you brought it up. You know, <laughs> Sorry, when they um, so Teen Titans go to a movie. They they decide they can't they every superhero and every superhero team has a movie and they don't. So they decide if there's no superheroes and it's just them, they'll get a movie. So they go back and they. They have a time machine, obviously. Right. Keep Bruce Wayne. Um, and their time machines were big wheels. <laughs> right. He had to pedal a certain speed. Because um, we all know that that's how time travel works if you don't have a DeLorean. Um, and they and they save, like, uh, there's a bunch of turtles walking towards, like, you know, toxic waste. And they just turn the turtles around walk somewhere else. <laughs> they save Bruce Wayne. Uh, um, the pa- the parents, parents. from being, And then... When they come back in regular time and the world is just on fire and there's no, they have to go back and save all the superheroes. Right, and then reset their origin stories, and then the, so they have to go down Crime Alley. Oh. And what I forget what it was is like they push the they they, they, they uh, throw the pearl necklace on Martha Wayne and then push her down this crime. Alley. Yeah, and then it's like all you hear are gunshots and you see the flash against the brick wall, and then they look at each other and give them themselves a thumbs up. <laughs> so awful. <laughs> Uh, but um, you know what I also I, uh, I will mention this I haven't I can't remember what I've been watching um, you know aside from Stranger Things and you know card sharks and, yeah right uh, but I have watched uh, movie trailers uh, one of which is the uh, beautiful day in the neighborhood with Tom Hanks playing Mister Rogers and it it kind of got me God damn it you know All right, Tom Hanks is an asshole yeah what a piece of crap. Um, although somebody else, so it, that that looks good. It made me kind of emotional to watch some of the uh, the trailer. I guess the premise is that it takes place like towards the end of his run on television, and there's like an, uh, somebody doing an interview. Yes, <laughs> heavily. That he hit the milk bottle hard. Um, but there's this like um, you know thirty something year old reporter that's doing. Or like an author or something like that who's doing like a, 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 a piece on him and interviewing him, you know, as he's going off the air. And then, um, you know, kind of gets to know him a little bit better. So it's one of those types of connections. Get to know me. Yeah, exactly. So, and it, But it looks, um, you know, you, in the trailer you actually hear Tom Hanks singing It's a Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood and doing the whole shoe flip and, you know, wearing the card again. And it's like, okay, I can, I, I can buy into this. But then somebody else pointed out on Twitter that Colin Hanks also played Mr. Rogers on Drunk History, um, to which Colin Hanks screen capped and said that face app is <laughs> is terrible or something like that because I do the side by side of him as Mr. Rogers and his dad as Mr. Rogers so um, anyways Mr. Rogers uh, is going to be back in November I think so you know look for that um, what else um, nah, 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 I think that's about it I, you know there's, there's so much to watch so much to do so much to see so what's wrong with taking the back seat You'll never know if you don't grow. You never shine if you don't slow. Hey now, you're an all star. Hey now, <laughs> <laughs> let's just end it there. That's a sentence. That <laughs> hey, that's a sentence. Oh, so wait, wait, what's in the bag? Is it, you you have this? None of your fucking business. <laughs> okay, what's in the bag? I, I, the- I, I, I thought we'd do this later. Uh, much later. I, I didn't buy gifts for anybody on the trip. Good. Because uh, fuck everybody. Yeah, fuck you know, everyone. That's my life. Except for you. What? And and a whole bag for I, me? I, I thought I thought we'd do this on the show while we're doing it, but I'm not going to. So you can you can he's, enjoy this with your family. He's holding later. the bag he's holding his hand in the bag as if he's like sticking me up behind like a, <laughs> a bank counter. Um, I haven't looked at what he put down on the table yet. So what you, you want to lead it's, into this? It's a, okay, so it's a family game or a game with you can play with friends. Uh, we bought it. Uh, bought it at Six Flags or Universal? I think we bought it at Six Flags, and 
You want to? You want to? You want me to guess this like pyramid no. style? Like you give me like a list of things, and it's like you know uh, what a turtle would say. You, you could just look at it, and you could tell us what it is. Have you seen these? It says dare to compare on the lid, and it's a little canister, a plastic canister of Jelly Belly Bean Boozled Jelly Beans. The fifth edition, two new flavors contains weird and wild flavors. Wow, these are neat. But it's a game, so you, so oh, it's a game. It's yeah, not, it's not no. So you don't know what they, they are when they come out. You you oh. like it, it comes out one jelly bean at a time. Well, it's almost like um, the Harry Potter yes. jelly beans. Yes, yes, one hundred percent. Like they ripped it off from Harry Potter. So you can get butter popcorn, or you can get booger. Right. And they look the same, so you don't know. So it's this. It's a, and when the woman sold it to us, she's like, "You do want to have a tra- little trash barrel to puke into w- right next to you." Yeah. Um, and and I will tell you, uh, I had the fish one, Oof. and honestly, it was it was hours. It, it was like dead brush your fish. teeth. It's yeah. dead fish. Like honestly, it was. And it gets stuck in your nostril, like just that smell. Is this like the segue into the Hunger Games? Like, is this what we're gonna? <laughs> is so, this what we're leading into? Originally, when when we got it at the store, like I'm like, okay, I brought one for us to play there with Renetsky and management and the boys, and I was like, oh, you know, I'll get one for you know when the boys, is, you know, my brother's kids come over and all the cousins, we have a party at like my mom's or something. And I'm like, okay, we'll do that on the podcast. It would be fun to do that on the podcast. And um, after I got the fish one, I'm like. I really hope Joe enjoys playing this game with his family at home. This will look great on my shelf next to the Duff beer can and the Moxie. Uh, and and so so that and and you, and you think we're done? You think we're over? Like what more can you want from that? Well, Joe, what? While I was in Roswell, New Mexico, when in Roswell, I I bought something. And the thing is, you can get these other places, but the fact that I bought this a towel for you uh-huh. in Roswell, New Mexico. Uh, and again, no gift for anybody else. It's for us. This is an this us was gift. for you. That's a you gift. <laughs> <laughs> Contains one tin foil hat. <laughs> Great for humans. <laughs> right. Comfy felt lining. Well, that's good. Right, right. Hey, because if there's one thing that's lacking in a tin foil hat, it's comfort. <laughs> Not just for nuts. Okay, because I wasn't going to put it on my nuts. But hey. it's good to know that it's not just for them. So you can put it on your nuts, or, and, and honestly, the, the the fact that that box has a tad bit wear and tear, you cannot believe the. Cr- I mean, did so you have we, to tackle somebody for this? No, no. But we lived in the car for like a month. You know mm. what I mean? And it's like every time, like you know, we pulled over to like sleep at a rest stop. The juggling I had to do of taking the cooler out, the laundry basket out, putting the front seat, and moving this down. The fact that that has survived like the whole trip. This was. <laughs> Because we got that on the way out. And the fact that that little thing took up that much space, I was like, we're not buying anything else. <laughs> That's it. It's really funny because it does say in the back, replace after six weeks. <laughs> and then there's also available tinfoil hat for cats. <laughs> and there's a picture of a cat with a tinfoil hat on it. Toot says, no! <laughs> <laughs> he drives around all over the town. So, Toots is the driver. I- I'm in Roswell, New Mexico, thinking of you, bought you a tinfoil hat. <laughs> the satellite with the laser beam <laughs> shooting at the tinfoil hat. So I will take a helicopter. Picture of that. Oh God, it's 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 really good, and it's good. It's it's, it's for ages fourteen plus. You right. know, so you're sorry, your little ones can't wear this, and they'll have to be infiltrated. Oh, me, They're going to be. Sure I get that. There we go. Yeah, that's they, one for the books, right? Um, but yeah, okay. So this is going on my head. This is not going on my shelf. <laughs> I'll be wearing this someday. Because that's how they get you. That's how they get you. You almost want to get a cat now, don't you? I do, just for the hat. Yeah, I mean, it's like now that I know that it's out there. Um, well, thank you. You 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 think too much about me when you're not with me, and that uh, scares me. But that it's also reciprocal. I mean, not that I went out and bought you. And honestly, I would have. I did see something in the store that I was like, I'll buy this for Jacques. And then I remembered, oh yeah, Jacques detests material things. <laughs> right. Like I was gonna get you like the the re release of the Han Solo action figure that it was in Target, like they had it like on the old cards, you know. Right, right. <clears throat> and I was like, eh, but he A Jacques probably already saw this and would have bought it had he seen it. And B, um, would probably spit in my face if I gave it to him because, you know, he's trying to minimize his life. 
No, I, 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 I would, I would, I would never spit in your face. Um, you know how much people in pay my for that, on right? Yeah. Craigslist? No, I would say thank you, and I would tape it up over your shoulder on the door behind, so I could look at it. Every right. It would, time it I would live next him. to Teddy Bruschi on my basement door. Um. Uh, so yeah, no. So, uh, yeah, we didn't buy anything else on the road trip. The only thing we bought, and we'll talk about it if we do the sideshow about the trip, is the little guy loves the uh, show. Um, uh, Fixer Upper with Chip and Joanna yes. on HGTV. Right. We didn't go to the Hockey Hall of Fame, although we were in Niagara Falls, just 90 minutes shy of Toronto. Uh, we kind of drove near Canton, Ohio on the way <laughs> from Michigan down to St. Louis, uh, or as I like to call it, Navin Johnson. <laughs> No, no, we do, we drive right past Cooperstown on the way to Niagara Falls. None of those stops. None of those stops. Uh, but did we spend a day? I like I don't mention Springfield. But, uh, uh, I'm for Springfield, Mass. The no, NBA no, we, 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 I, I already told you my great, my like two years ago, we're driving to Six Flags out in Agawam, and we go by, and the oldest one, he's a nine at the time. And I didn't mean to sound so mean as I said it. The wife said it was hysterical, but oh my god, it was mean the way I said it. He he wants he wants he was being very sweet, and he saw this giant basketball. He goes, look at that, Papa. I'm like, yeah, that's a basketball Hall of Fame. We should go there someday, Papa. To which I said, name one basketball player ever. <laughs> which right. He, he couldn't. He couldn't do. Yeah. He couldn't do that. Which. That's not a him problem. That's, That's a, a failing on my part. Well, yeah, you don't let him watch it because of all the blacks. <laughs> I was gonna, I was gonna say, I was going to say, um, uh, corporate infiltration, <laughs> and, and uh, yeah, the blacks. Okay, no, <laughs> I know you. But you, you are not a very good person, Chatwick Boseman. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so yeah, so but no, we don't go to any of those things. We went to 14 different theme parks and spent a day in Waco. Uh, and again, like going to see Roswell. Like if I'm going to go to Waco, I want to go to the Branch Dominions. <laughs> like I want to, I want to see the real Waco. Uh, but the little guy loved it. I mean, and just I kept taking pictures of him to send to his mom. That's their thing. Like she was a little jealous we went to Roswell without her, and there's she was a little jealous we're getting to go. And do all these adventures on the road, not just a park that goes town and the other thing, but that's that's their thing. That's I'm, their thing. Watching, I'm together. surprised you weren't trying to storm Area 51 with part of the uh, you know the, the group of people who are. Dude, they moved that years ago. Yeah, that's not there anymore. Right? No, you're we'll talk of... about that. We'll put on the hat. You got the hat, <laughs> and then we'll talk, we'll do a deep dive into 51. No, any of that stuff. We'll talk about the Waco later. Uh, except I did. I spent the most money. The most money spent on the trip at 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 uh, Disney, at the Star Wars land, buying the, you know, as I'm about to say, realistic Jedi outfit. <laughs> uh, the Jedi outfit for him, and it was just like 200 bucks. And then at, 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 uh, at Chip and Joanna's huge complex, he bought a pillow and a blanket. Did he buy a realistic hammer? Oh, God. No, he bought a pillow. Oh. A pillow and a blanket, and he, um, you know, that, that was an, another like 150 bucks or something like that. And the oldest one, like, he, you're spending so much money. He gets all these things, and I swear, I turn him, I go, We got you braces. <laughs> um, <laughs> see, see, you laughed. Other people laughed when I told him the story. He does not think that's funny. <laughs> right. You know, uh, yeah, he will, though. He will. All right. On that awful note, do you have a parenting tip of the week? Well, I was going to ask you, since you spend so much time with your kids, you must be racking up the parenting tips, and we could probably do a whole sideshow on parenting tips. We we stopped in Austin, Texas to see our good friend John, uh, ba old bass player from my band, uh, one of the, the best musician I've ever had the honor of being in a band with. Hands down, the best musician ever. Uh, better drummer than me, better guitarist than most guitarists in my band, and hands down one of the best bass players I've ever heard. Um, just, just a great, overall great guy. He took us to this like river, this special, out of the way, like exclusive river place with like where you can jump off. Like it, it was, we fucking went to a beer commercial in the middle of the woods and nowhere in West Texas, um, really secluded really tough to get into a really nice house there and 
Uh, I I was never going. Uh, I'm vegetarian. My my boys are, but I'm not, as you know, not preachy. And I've always said, if they ever want to go fishing, they can, but they have to cook and eat it. And I've I've been like, if, if they want to go with Biff, because Biff is our friend. Biff is a big fisher, fishing person. Go out with him. I'm fine. So at this place, um, you can jump off this 20 foot rock cliff into this thing. And there's fish and everything. And this woman owns this retreat type place who has asked as, as a favor if John could come there and fish periodically because where you jump in and then the river goes down, it, it, it narrows too much. It's too, if, unless it's a really rainy season, the fish overpopulate where you, where you swim and they get aggressive. Um, and if he could come periodically fish and then dump the fish on the other side of the river, like you have to walk about a quarter mile and dump them. Oh wow! To populate so, fish transportation, right? So it is, is, is a conservation thing, and and there are there look there are parts of this country where hunting is important. That if you have too many of this, they starve to death. Yep. You know what I mean? And and so it's a conservation thing. So yeah, that's why those people go to Africa to shoot all those giraffes. I mean, you know, those right. giraffes go way and, and those hog fucking wild. elephants. Yeah, it's oh. the fucking elephants that are really fucking it, asking yeah, exactly. for it. You look at those; they're just pieces yeah. of shit right. elephants walking around. Being yeah. elephant, I have tusks. Stuff. Right, exactly. How do you shoot an elephant? Anyways, what the guy? Uh, but no, you. Anyways, in his pajamas. So the boys, <laughs> so, and and I, I've said it once. You've said it twice, three times. A lady. There's nothing, nothing in the rule book <laughs> <laughs> that says an elephant can't pitch. Uh, but yeah, so you did John's so, uh, fishing. So. so and the boys got to go fishing, Great. you know, and and they understood. It's like, okay, well, you're actually saving these fish. Uh, the my parenting tip is find people who are better with your children than you are, and let them spend time with them. Uh, so John is baiting a hook, which even before I was a vegetarian, like when I was like 19, fishing wasn't my thing. I'm Portuguese and fishing's not my thing. So therefore, Ooh. I am not Portuguese. You know, I, I think so. Yeah. I, I really, you know, I'd say go back where you came from, but they want to take you. Yeah, I, I, Some think, of I think I'm technically <laughs> Jewish now. <laughs> so they, uh, so so they got to fish and for it's like 10 feet away where he, he he has all his tackle stuff and he baits a hook with like live worms and stuff and then they got a and it was kind of shooting fish in a barrel it's like it's unrealistic their first time fishing cuz well it's realistic the oldest one almost caught a couple but they literally he gets them out of the water and they fall off the little guy caught five mm. five uh, john's record in one day is 30 but the thing is how patient he was. Like they would bait the hook. By the time they walked the ten feet over, unless you're careful with the pole and put it in too fast, the worm would fall off. And after the second or third time, I would have been not as patient as let's say most everybody else on the planet. And just watching how sweet and wonderful he was. And then taking him to I mean, when he first told us we were gonna do this, I'm like, my boys aren't really outdoorsy and you know I'm not outdoorsy at all. This isn't our kind of thing. When you find out there's going to be fish in there, they won't want to swim in there. And he was so great with him. So my parenting tip is, you know, bring people into the fold who are better people than you and let your kids spend time with them so that they know... Uh, what life is like outside of your little bubble. Yeah. And so that's my parenting tip. Find people better at raising your kids than you are and let your kids spend time with them. And uh, thank you, John. Yeah. Uh, and um, I agree with that. So, um, you know, here, you take my kids for the week. <laughs> really? Yeah. <laughs> um, all right. Well, I hope you at home or in car enjoy this Carnival Personnel podcast. Do you think they've missed us as much as we've missed them? I don't know. You can text them later. <laughs> find out. You, you have a direct line to the audience, our fans, if you will. Um, yeah. So you know, I uh, we don't. I don't have any social media presence at all. I don't do anything on social media. I want to. I, I, if Jacques could spell better, I'd give him access <laughs> to the social media accounts. But really, it's just like it's just there to post um, 
episode links, and that's about it. And, and the picture I just took of you with the tinfoil hat. Yeah, you can at mention Carnival Podcast on Twitter with that, and then I'll Which re- I probably do. Maybe I'll retweet it if I'm feeling up to it. If I check the <laughs> the uh, Twitter account every once in a while, and Facebook is you know whatever the lost cause. And I, I don't know. I think I don't know. I don't know how many people are still listening. I know I'm not. Um, but that's it. So um, I guess we're gonna be. Doing this more often now that you're back in town and, um, you know, the dog days of summer are settling in. We'll have lots more to talk about. We'll probably end up doing a sideshow at some point, either about the... We got to do some... If we're going to do the sideshow about the trip, we got to do it soon because otherwise it's going to be a stale, you know, and, and those memories, they're just going to fade, you know, you, you got to file the report as soon as you witness the crime because, you know... Witnesses die. It's true. You know, things it's happen. Um, evidence gets eaten. You know, that, that'll that happen. Yes. Um, so that, that that's it. I've stopped, I, I, I think people have stopped listening as soon as you stopped talking about five minutes ago. So on that note, I'm going to say Jacques and everyone out there in podcast land, don't forget.